According to Steam, only 30% of players have beaten Lily and Lilene. Oh, I gotta rant about that skill issue at the end of the video, and also it seems like people need this kind of playthrough. So that's the goal of this episode. Last time we got tons of levels with the new Mercy Ring and upgraded our team, so let's take on Lily and Lilene. Uh, so we mount, like, do we hit him with a flare arrow? Oh, actually, yeah. Get some of that damage down, get the burn, poison, and now, like, do we actually see damage? Oh, the handgun does damage. I was not expecting that much damage. Okay. Okay. After after what happened with, like, the Alpha Pals, I was actually worried where it's like, what, Lilene's only going to take 200 from, like, a fire-boosted headshot? Now we're just going to have Pyr Pyron do all the work for us by being mounted up. And we run away from attacks and get our shields back. Okay, this is free. Easy. How is it that 70% of players have not beaten this? And then everyone's saying, like, oh, there's no content in the game. There's no end game. Oh, it doesn't count, even though at the beginning of the game it says towers hold the key. This is literally bossing. Like, you have to beat Shadow Beaker, you're not in the end game. Doesn't matter how much breeding you've done. Why breed if you quit before beating Lileen? Y'all suck. Also, it converts even this to, like, fire damage. It's like, get a fire bow poison hit if I'm not skish you. That also ticks for good damage, and then if shenanigans happen, we get a burn down. Ow. Okay, we we hurt. We don't want to lose Pyron, though. Charge over. Burn him. Do that. Bow. Yeah, then we just wreck. We put 4,000 damage in, in the dome real quick. Doing fine. Pyron, Pyron could just go without taking that many hits. Reload. Poison. Yeah, I think like we can just like spam soft hits. Go handgun. Uh E is Spirit Fire. I don't think Spirit Fire is a good one. Flare arrow is pretty good though. That's like multi fire hits. Parents in danger. That's fine because we can always swap off, go this dude. Who also gives us fire hits. Uh, I keep I keep rotating the wrong one. I scroll up for poison bow, and then I scroll down. All right, so reload, poison bow, get poison, huge crits. Also, like since the update, this just feels better for the fight. Poison, uh, oh, handgun, bam. Yeah, so you do a clip, you switch, and then you get poison. I mean, Wixen is the same as uh, Pyron. It converts to fire damage for headshots. I'm doing... I was about to say we're doing better, but I just, I just like, tanked a ton of hits. So we're low again, and we might have a skishu. Need to get my shield back. Oh, Wixen isn't taking hits for me. God. <laughs> Everything still hurts. Alright. Poison. I said that weird, I think. Bow. Dead. Free. 7,000 experience. Yeah. What else is there to say? Like, Wixen... Like, you just, you just have the pals that give you fire damage. You mount up. You avoid hits. You lay down those good headshots. Wixen does the same thing. Good fighting as well. Pyron can contribute. Poison damage. Adders in the long run. You know, if we got like 100 poison ticks at 7,000, that's like 10% for free. Our gear, just like the uh, uncommon stuff, didn't need anything too crazy. We have access to refine, which we didn't even fully upgrade for. Regular handgun, life pendant, defense pendant. So no attack pendant, no extra bonus defense pendant. Have a lot of stamina so we can, like, run and dodge. Defense is not great. And the rest was in health so we can actually tank. Got our Giga Shield. Boom. Favorite pal? Uh, where is he? Him. 
Let's see, we got all that ore. We sold some stuff. We got more ore. Beat this game faster for like the perfect playthrough idea. So it's like rush level nine, get dire house saddle, go to fisherman's village, get heat armor. I feel like Dune Shelter's a waste of time, but at some point you have to go and get those Giga and Hyperspheres. Because then you use the Giga and Hyperspheres to catch Dig Toys at like level 15. You slap three of them on an ore station. I don't even know how many Dig Toys you want. Like, do you actually catch like five Dig Toys? You put two on the ore, three, or no, no three on the ore, two on a rock quarry, done. You never need to touch that again. They're just gonna be like perma mining. Then you just get whatever other pals you've caught for experience, put them on the uh, wood cutting, and you don't you don't build anything out, else out in the base, right? Use Van Worm to get your life monk effigies. Maybe max catch rate. If not, just go for like an hour or something. Then at level 30, you immediately get yourself a Pyron. And like, that's the thing about Pyron. Like, once you get Pyron, that's when you go to the desert and you can just like run through the desert and open all those chests. So like, you catch all the pals here and then you catch all the pals here. And then using pa Pyron is like free for this area. The species out here are kind of weird, but that's what you like. You go down here and you catch them all here. It's like the Wollapop and the uh, Mazarina and stuff. Get yourself some Univolt. Like, do we want. How much better is Univolt than Direhal? Direhal's 800 running, 1050 mounted. Univolt's 720 running, 1100. Like, yeah, Univolt's not better. Especially if you get just like a swift Dire Howl or something. Univolt doesn't even have more... Oh wait, Dire Howl is pissed stamina though. And only a third of players have caught 90 different kinds of pals. So that means they haven't encountered the legendary pals. They haven't caught all like the rare in-game pals. Also, how many experience bonus pal catches does it take to hit level 50? I wish there was a tracker for that. Like how many players have actually hit level 50. Because you can hit that and then Victor can still crush you. Now, I posted this observation on Reddit, and yeah, Reddit still continues to be the worst place ever because people are saying like, oh, the tower bosses don't count as in-game or they don't count as the game. The intro cutscene is, go to the towers, the tree holds the key, and the towers are so prominent, they're impossible to avoid. So, if you haven't beaten all of the current bosses, you haven't made it to the in-game. You haven't beaten Pal World enough to be able to put it down and say there's no game content. Also, what about for future content? You want to have Victor and Shadowbeak defeated. You want to have enough skill to be able to get ready for the new content and whatever else is coming. So it really seems like a lot of people got to like mid-level 30s, maybe level 40, because that is a lot of grinding. And then they got stuffed out by the tower bosses, didn't even think to like lower the difficulty or amp their damage, just kind of like clear out the content inside the game. Then they said, ah, there's nothing in this game anyways, so it doesn't matter that I can't beat the bosses well, I'll wait for the updates or I'll just quit. You know, there's the game's over. Because the way that people were talking about, like, oh, a lot of people actually made it super far, or maybe they just weren't ready for the challenge of Victor and Shadowbeak, but at least they made it to that point in the game. Nah, and then just also looking at the different kinds of pals and all those other catches, like, yeah, a lot of people actually haven't played as far as it seems, and then they just kind of quit, and that's doing weird stuff with the player base of this game, but it's still doing pretty well overall. I don't know what this means going forward, but yeah, there you go. And I guess a lot of people actually need these kinds of guides. Huh. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.